Hey everybody, my name is Kim Seaver. Welcome back to my channel. Last week, I uploaded a video in which I responded to a poorly conducted interview by Hal Roberts of Bridge City News. In it, he interviews a transphobic psychotherapist who thinks she's a sex and gender expert. Her comments were repulsive, but the interview itself was terrible. If you haven't seen it yet, click here to watch it. Anyhow, this week Hal interviews someone who wasn't transphobic, presumably in response to the significant pushback Bridge City News received on social media. It was their way to try to seem like they're being fair and balanced. I figured I should probably do a response video for this one too. In this Bridge City News video, Hal interviews Dr. Aaron DeVore, who's a trans man, an award-winning teacher, and a sociologist and sexologist. He's the chair in transgender studies at the University of Victoria. He's also the founder of Transgender Archives and the founder of the International Interdisciplinary Moving Trans History Forward Conferences. Already, you can tell it's going to be a different kind of video, and it was. The format was quite different. Whereas last week's video seemed to be more of a dialogue between Hal and his other guests where they talked back and forth building off of each other's comments, this week's interview was far less conversational. Hal had a list of questions and he seemed intent on getting through them, doing very little to engage with Aaron's comments. Actually, on that note, this video is going to differ somewhat from last week's video. Obviously, I'm not going to tear apart Aaron's comments like I did with Anne last week. Unlike Anne, Aaron is actually an expert in sex and gender. He didn't just write a book, cite God in it, then call him himself an expert. He's published three books related to sex and gender, all published by university presses. And he's published a dozen articles in peer-reviewed journals. So what I plan to do today instead is string all of Hal's questions together from this week. So you can see what I mean by his lack of engaging with Aaron. Here we go. There's been a significant increase in the number of people who are transitioning from their biological gender into another. What are some of the reasons behind this and how should we respond to the trend? Dr. Aaron DeVore, Chair in Transgender Studies, joins me now from the University of Victoria. Dr. DeVore, welcome to Bridge City News. So, Doctor, until recently, the medical community viewed transgenderism as a type of mental illness, using terms such as gender identity disorder or gender dysphoria, but times have changed. How should we view this today? So what's the big difference then between someone who self-identifies as the opposite of their biological gender and someone who is, let's say, gender fluid? And I understand there's a belief that there are other genders as well? possibly more than we've talked about. Can you explain? Now, it's one thing for a person to genuinely believe that they're trapped in the wrong body, but there appears to be a lack of scientific evidence to back that up. Your thoughts? Now, there seems to be a dramatic increase in children seeking to transition. Why do you think that is? Some stats show that traditionally, many children who question their gender grow out of this and are content with their biological gender once they become adults. So would it be wiser to wait before using puberty and hormone blockers on vulnerable kids? Now there seem to be a significant number of feminists who do not agree that a trans woman is truly a woman. Even some female athletes who have argued that a trans woman should not compete in the same sport because many times the trans woman is physically stronger. Your thoughts? But how about that physical characteristic, you know, if they were born biologically male and they've got bigger muscles, they're taller, they're stronger, would they not have the advantage in certain sports? over women yeah, so who were so you know, born this, as a female? Right there. Yeah. What do you think of the movement toward requiring others to address a trans person by their preferred pronoun? Professor Jordan Peterson disagrees with it, calling it uh, compelled speech, which would violate our right to freedom of speech. But how do you see it? What would you like to see from the faith community? It seems unlikely that there will be 100% agreement on the issue, and there will be differing viewpoints on this. So how can we really bridge the gap? Dr. Aaron DeVore, Chair in Transgender Studies at the University of Victoria, thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you. You see what I mean? He seemed intent on getting through the questions and did very little to engage with Aaron. The interview seemed like an obligation. I don't know if he's doing it because several people pushed back on his last interview or because someone else told him he had to. But he certainly looks uncomfortable. As well, I know he watched my video last week because he responded to something in it. But I have to wonder if he watched the entire thing. His question about children growing out of being trans, for example, was based on a claim Anne made in her interview, and I, which I addressed in mine. It was a claim made on misinterpretation of, studies, of a study's results. As well, it seems Hal has never watched my video on trans athletes having a physical advantage over cis athletes which I wouldn't have expected him to until last week. He's probably never even seen my channel. 
But his line of questioning is something I've heard many times before. Check out the comment section on my trans athlete video if you don't believe me. Speaking of his line of questioning, he sure likes to beg the question a lot. In several questions, he made assumptions then asked Aaron for his response to those assumptions. As if those assumptions were actually fact, such as his questions on blockers and trans athletes. Aaron did an outstanding job recognizing the fallacious questioning and responding to it calmly, professionally, and rationally. The one time he engaged with Aaron's comments was regarding trans athletes, and you could tell he was getting confrontational through his questioning. His inability to be objective was starting to come through more readily, and you could clearly see that he ideologically disagrees with Aaron on trans issues. I love that when he introduces the topic of pronouns, of all the examples he could choose to reference on this topic, he references Jordan Peterson. There are countless experts in sex, gender, queer, and trans studies who've commented on the issue of pronoun usage, but he chose a right-wing hack with no expertise in gender or sex. It's another example of hell being unable to hide his own transphobia. My favorite part, however, is when Al asks Aaron how we can bridge the gap between the pro-trans and anti-trans sides. What an odd thing to ask after a series of transphobic questions. One thing we can do to bridge the gap is to have transphobic news directors check their own transphobia at the door when they come into work. Using tired myths and dog whistles to appeal to your Christian viewers will hamper any real efforts to bridge gaps. All that being said, I thought this was a much better interview than last week's. I think it was needed. It would have been better if last week's interview hadn't happened, but bringing on Aaron was a good move to try to balance it out. And it was Aaron who made this interview better, not Hal. Al Aaron deserves all the credit. Apparently next week Hal's interviewing local LGBTQ plus activist and political candidate Devin Hargraves. Hal claims they'll be discussing conversion therapy. I've known Devin for a few years, so I'm looking forward to watching that interview. It'll be interesting to see who they bring on for the other side of the issue, though. It can't be worse than Adam Gillies, can it? Anyhow, thanks for watching. I hope you have found my responses to the interview to be insightful, thoughtful, and well-reasoned, even if they might have been a tad exasperated. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. And please also share my video and subscribe to my channel.